Hey, it's Doodle Bud back again. I did a recent video where I was sort of, uh, you know, complainering about the nib point here, the extra fine point on my Lamy 2000, saying it was too wide. I was moaning and groaning, said, oh dear, what should I do? So the options I settled on were either send it to a professional to grind it down to a true extra fine or just give her here at home and make it a cursive italic. And so I've decided to give her. So I have a, a special piece of equipment that's gonna make this job even easier. Check out this piece of work. This came to me. I was contacted to do a review by Andon Star. They make some pretty cool little optical equipment. They got some high-end stuff. This is a sort of a mid-grade type deal. A lot of times you use stuff like this in the printing industry as well. You're checking boards. I've used that myself back in my engineering days. But they sent me this whole uh, pretty skookum looking setup. And it's a digital microscope. It's got a camera screen on there. You can even plug it to an HDMI, all this sort of stuff. And I thought, this is this is perfect. I got to review it anyways. I want to grind my pen. So I'm going to use this bad boy. Look at this. It's got a stand and everything. So this is going to be an Lamy 2000 nib grind slash product review. All in one. Let's get her going. It was some pretty uh, serious hardware. It has a nice base on it, adjustable as well to go up and down on it. Got some lighting, some extra lenses, even a remote. I don't know why that's there. We'll figure that out. And here's the screen. But let me just show you. This is the one I've been using for uh, some of my previous videos. Nothing wrong with it. It's okay for the price. You, you know, it's not too shabby. But this stand is terrible because when you start getting some serious magnification, it, you know, it just doesn't do the job. It flips and flops and you, you're trying to get tight little focus. And, you know, there were small adjustments make a massive difference and you can't see anything. So having a proper stand that you can adjust up and down, get the right focus. We got everything all geared on here. Uh, I think this is going to be great help for doing the grinds, but also especially for the videos. So thank you again for uh, sending me this stuff to review. I'll have links and all this stuff down there in the description, but I'm going to put this together, show you what it looks like, and then we'll get started on the pen. set up the things together plugged it in worked great i just have this little uh, adapter down here on the base to look at it you can record through the screen obviously i'm going to do that you get pretty damn good resolution uh i'm just going to have it sort of in the standard it's fhd at uh, 1920 by 1080 60 frames per second so i hope this looks clear on the video when i do that you got a button screen there to operate capture pictures and go through the menu but that's what the remote is for so you can do all that remote control because you know, you can take some time getting your sample in focus and all that. And then you got to touch the screen, the thing wiggles and your, your image is blurred. So you can do everything remote controlled. They uh, include some slides with the stage. So that gets backlit. So you can get it real up close and personal, which is kind of cool. Some samples to play around with. You got your cables and uh, a little bug box there. This unit did come with the uh, micro SD card, but let's just go through the lenses. There's the super magnification lens. So the working operational distance on this one here, what do we got? Lens D, go through the plastic. There we go, four to five millimeters. So you're really up close. This is, you know, to be looking at slides, that type of stuff. This is, they say 1800 to 2040 X. So, uh, you know, that's some pretty serious zoom on there. We have this one, this is L, yeah. So this is L. This is a 90 to 300 millimeter working range. This one is about 60 to 240 times magnification. And the one I have on here right now, this is lens A. It's a 12 to 320 millimeter working distance. So quite a, quite a range on that. And this is an 18 to 720 times magnification. Taking you around the side here. I mean, look, this is not a laboratory grade microscope system. Those start at like, I don't know, 30,000 bucks before you even add accessories. But you got uh, dual lights here that you can adjust and illuminate your samples. If you're putting stuff on a stage, you can pop it on there. You got adjustable arms. This is nice. You can get your smooth adjustment to get your final focus on there instead of doing it with uh, with your objective down here. And they also have some high-end ones too. Like these are just in, I think this is like a ABS, just like a plastic housing. But 
Um, I've been playing with this and you get some, some pretty damn good shots. I'm going to show you a few sample shots with this, but uh, yeah, it, it's a decent unit. Uh, one thing I notice on here, let me take something off. Yeah, that's going to come apart. One second. There we go. So these are all just, uh, you know, little screws to hold everything in place and you don't want to have metal going in this so you have burrs. So they're smart. There's a little plastic bit on the end there. So we're going against the plastic on the metal, not metal and metal causing problems. So that's smart with that. You know, a good economical solution for this price point. You're not, like I said, you got to make some, some compromises, but this thing actually goes together pretty good. I've been playing around here before I showed this to you and, uh, Man, I got to tell you, this is going to be an absolute dream to work with, especially for the channel. But let's get our target under the microscope, the Lamy 2000 nib. Let's have a look at that. And then uh, I'll just showcase some of the lenses here just so you can have an idea of the type of clarity and magnification we can get. Here I am up close looking at that Lamy 2000 nib. That is the extra fine I have on my pen. And this is something I didn't know initially when I got the pen. It, it's not a standard type of grind. It doesn't have that typical ball. But let, uh, let's look a little further down here. There's that uh, little filler hole that you use when you're filling the piston mechanism. When I did my in-depth review of this, I spotted that burr, and now you can you can really see that there. So I might take my countersink and just get rid of it. But yeah, it's really cool just to see the finish on this. This looks quite different under this magnus uh, sorry microscope compared to what I had before. Like, look at that seam, how close it is, that brush finish, how it matches just perfectly with the body. So... It's amazing. Same with those seams. Let's check out these little ears here. You either love them or you hate them, but there's a nice up close. Now the piston mechanism, it just vanishes into the body. So I thought I'd catch that under the microscope as well, just to see how smooth that motion is and that seam and that machining. Yeah, top notch. This thing just shows every little detail. This is going to be great for the channel and also for nib grinding. So here's the nib. And what I'm going to do is I'm just trying to suss out a, a plan of attack. I think what I'm going to do is normally I grind the bottom and then square off the front, but just with this particular shape to get the kind of grind I want, what I think I'm going to be doing is actually grinding off the front of it first and then doing the bottom. Because one thing you got to watch out for here, I'm going to pause it, is that's actually part of the nib, not tipping. So that's the gold. So I, I don't want to remove that. I just want to remove the tipping. And up until that little point there, that's where the tipping stops. So I got to be mindful of that when I go through the grind. And there's a little bit of a better picture so you can see that. So I'm going to do a measurement here. I did a writing sample. So let's get a baseline of what the nib was like before. So I have this little calibration slide. If you have a microscope, you got to have this because it's not just for zoom, it's measurement. So about a half millimeter on the cross stroke. Sorry, that was the down stroke. And then I'm going to measure it again on the cross stroke. If I can get it set up here again, about another half millimeter those are 0.1 millimeter divisions on there the next steps now is just get out my stones my gear and start grinding this nib and then i'll be just checking it on the screen here and recording what i see so we can do this together wish me luck that at the end of this video i have a nice writing pen i'm starting stuff off with my combination stone i have it's a 400 1000 grit i'm going to use the 1000 grit just because it's such a small nib point so i'm getting rid of the very front giving a quick look i got some more distance to go so i'm just going to do this back and forth a few times till i feel i'm getting kind of close and I'm just checking my work as i go so that's about where i want it so now i'm going to flatten that bottom side and same thing, super light pressure with this. You don't need to push hard on this. So we're just going nice and slow, taking our time, checking our work, just squaring things up. And I'll just quickly check it on paper. So I'm getting some decent line variation. I got some more to go, but that's the general shape of it right there. Now I have an 8,000 grit whetstone. Just going to smooth stuff out and uh, give it a little bit more of a polish. I do have a 4,000 grit stone, but I just went straight to the 8 on this case. I'm doing about two to three super light strokes just around the edges a hair so it's not as crisp and just checking my work as I go. So I'm pretty happy. Now I just got my micro mesh pads. I have, that is a uh, 6,000, then I have an 8,000, and then a 12,000 just to smooth it out. I sort of know now my general shape that I like because I've done this a few times and what suits my handwriting. And uh, to finish it off, there's a little burr you get between the two tines. So I do this sort of X stroke. And that gets rid of that little sharp, crisp edge that you can miss. So now I'm going to check it out, see how we're doing. I hope my uh, video helped you follow along again. 
Don't do this if you don't think you should be. And if you want to learn how, start on a cheap pan. Get some cheap uh, Jin Hao pans or order a batch of like five Jin Hao nibs or whatever brand you want and play around and you'll find out if you should or shouldn't do this. And to be honest, I probably shouldn't even be doing this, but I am. So, so here we go. Um, moment of truth, let's see how we did here. So I'm just going to do the exact same uh, writing sample as up above. Same ink as in the pen, same paper, same everything. Let's see how we're doing. So of course I'll get you up underneath the microscope afterwards. I'm still getting used to the nib. Um, super, super light pressure with this pen. So I'm still getting used to that, but you can just see the difference. Again, we'll get you a measurement on those cross strokes. The down strokes, I think I got a little bit more out of it. I could see maybe like 0.1 millimeter more, but you can see substantial reduction in those cross strokes. For me, this is a substantial difference. Uh, I really enjoy how this writes a lot better and just a little bit of flair, the thick and thin contrast, and it just does better with my style of writing. But let's get under the microscope and do that measurement. So using the same setup with the calibration slide, the down strokes look to be pretty much bang on a half millimeter and the cross strokes now are down to about 0.2 millimeter. My goal when doing this nib was to get it fairly close to what I have on my Mont Blanc 149. I ground this one myself. This was uh, the second nib I ever ground. It turned out turned out quite well. I really enjoy it. These are very different pens. This is quite you know larger as far as comfort in the hand, the, the grip section, all that sort of stuff, large nib. This is much more slender, hooded nib as well, but I thought it'd be cool to have a similar style of writing experience that I really enjoy with this pen right on my Lamy 2000. So I'll just do a quick writing sample for the both of them and let's see how close I got it. Here we go. I thought an appropriate writing sample would be the uh, name and model number of the microscope that I was reviewing and using while I did this grind. I found uh, the microscope worked out exceptionally well. I hope it, that helped you out too with seeing how to do a grind. I think we got it pretty darn close. I mean, the inks are different, so it's it's going to appear a little bit different. This is quite wet as well. Um, but I think it's it's pretty close to in the ballpark. I'd like to actually at one point flush them out, have the same ink in the two of them to really compare. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm still getting used uh, to the, the Lamy 2000 writing it this way, but so far I'm enjoying it. If I need to maybe just touch up the nib a little bit, I can. It'd, it'd just be a couple of minutes just to play around. But I'm pretty happy with that grind so far. I might tweak it a little bit as time goes on, but that's cool. You can do that. Just fine tune it. But I'm also pleasantly surprised with this setup. You know, to be honest, I wasn't expecting a whole lot. And this thing went way beyond that expectation. Is this the equivalent of, uh, you know, a $30,000 laboratory setup you know of course not this this retails for 180 us this is the seven inch screen with the hdmi if you don't want the hdmi i think it's maybe it's 20 bucks less and then there's a 20 dollar coupon off as well so 160 us yeah you know you, you got to use two hands when you adjust it to slide this up and down it's probably come crashing down i'm doing this one hand but you slide it up and down set your screws and then you got your adjustment here to do the final adjustment it's smooth enough for this job you got your lighting you got your other stuff for your your close-ups you have your multiple lenses a little remote to do everything and then you can catalog so this is i mean for a high school for this price point if you're teaching chemistry biology whatever it is this thing's great uh, even university part inspection. If you have an inspection room, whether it's uh, circuit boards or machine parts or whatever it is, this is great <laughs> for this price point. Obviously, if it's a huge company, they'll probably be spending more. You can't upgrade the optics. I did see some some models there that uh, had higher end lenses, but this is pretty darn good. So let's go through the, the manual. I'll show you a couple of things because there are a bunch of technical people who watch my channel. 
Um, you can do a lot of stuff right from the remote. You can invert colors, you can adjust, uh, you know, contrasts, and you can even mirror the images if you need to do that, which is really great. Um, you know, you can have date stamping, you can record audio with it as well, all that type of stuff. There's a grid you can go on, you can adjust it too. So if you need to, to have that um, for cataloging your pictures too. And then on top of that, there's even a software package you can download and uh, yeah, you can do all sorts of measurements. So it's sort of like a, a CAD for this microscope. So you can do distance between two points, you can measure rectangles, uh, you know, radiuses, diameters of circles, all that type of stuff. There's edge detection, there's all sorts of things. You can add in text, all that type of stuff you gotta do. So if you're, you know, inspecting boards and you, you need to catalog every board that goes out or whatever things it is you're making, there you go. If you're doing a research project and you got to take all these pictures, you're going to do, uh, you know, 500 samples you need to catalog. Yeah, this is, I am blown away for 160 bucks. You can upgrade. There's a 10 inch version too. I saw so a little bit more for that. I think it's maybe 80 or hundred dollars more or something, but, uh, wow. And then, like I said, it's got the HDMI. So is this overkill for maybe grinding a nip? Yeah, probably. But it sure does a hell of a good job and it makes uh, making videos easier. You're going to see this thing a bunch on uh, upcoming videos. So this is a new permanent feature for the Doodlebud channel. So thanks again to Adam Star for sharing this with me to, re, uh, to review and use on my channel. Super excited. There is a little handheld version. Uh, I'll throw a picture up on the screen that I'll review that. It's great for kids, but also I think it's it's nice and portable and be good for doing nibs too. And that I'm going to be giving away. So keep your eyes out for that one. So uh, thoroughly impressed. Pretty slick piece of gear. It's amazing what you can get for uh, for a few bucks out there. So we'll leave it there for now. Pretty happy with this microscope. Happy with this nib. I think the writing sample turned out not too bad. We'll leave it there for now. And as always, we'll catch you next time.